Rajnath Singh of the BJP will be addressing a press conference moments from now. Uh, remember, the BJP had lost its foothold in the south of India after the assembly polls in Karnataka, uh, but has managed to stitch together a grand alliance ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Now, Vijay Khan's DMDK, Ramadas's PMK and Vaiko's MDMK have joined the NDA in the presence of Rajnath Singh, the party president. The BJP had been in seat-sharing talks with each of those parties for more than a month. It already has an alliance with the PMK and MDMK. Now with the DMDK, Vijay Kant also joining the alliance. Its Tamil Nadu front is beginning to look much more solid. We'll be hearing from Rajnath Singh, the BJP president, uh, just moments from now. But uh, a crucial, crucial alliance forming for the NDA in the state of Tamil Nadu. Shrisha Reddy is with us on the phone line from Chennai. For more on this, uh, Shrisha, with these three Tamil partners for the BJP, uh, how, how many seats is the NDA looking at winning? I'm afraid we, we're trying to establish a more, uh, a better connection there with Shrisha, who is uh, just outside that venue. Uh, but to, to reiterate what's happening, uh, Rajnath Singh will be, is expected to be speaking at this press conference just moments from now, where he will welcome the DMDK, the PMK and MDMK into uh, an alliance for the 2014 elections. Remember, the PMK and MDMK are already part of it. Uh, I'm told T.S. Sudhir, our editor for the South, is now with us on the phone line. Uh, Sudhir, uh, a, very, a very solid uh, grouping going into the elections for the NDA. Absolutely. The BJP has been uh, uh, successful in roping in many allies, even though they may be very small allies. But essentially, the point that they wanted to prove was, was that it is not a political untouchable. And especially in Tamil Nadu, it serves, to, it serves their purpose because in sharp contrast, the Congress has not managed to get even a single ally. And many of their very senior leaders have refused to contest elections. So in that kind of a contrast, the BJP has come out looking pretty good. But on the ground, there would be problems because between the DMDK and the PMK, there have been sheet sharing uh, problems. And there is that apprehension that the share of votes between the PMK and the DMDK will not take place in many constituencies. So the BJP will have to iron out those uh, differences. But the major problem could come post polls because Jalita, who the NDA could possibly look as a possible post poll ally, should it fall short of the magical 272 mark, mm -hmm. does not have a good relation with either Vijay Kant of DMDK or Vaiko of MDMK. So in that kind of a scenario, the BJP may be forced to actually take a call on which side it wants to go with. So it all may depend on the numbers, but as of now, the BJP has been able to stitch together a good um, uh, rainbow coalition, at least on paper, in Tamil Nadu. And of course, uh, all of them appearing on, on stage together is, is, is certainly not going to hurt the, the NDA's reputation going into the elections. Uh, the, the, other, the other aspect of, of this, uh, uh, this alliance that's coming together is what uh, Mr. Adagiri might want to do as well, because he's been courting the BJP uh, from his stronghold of Madurai. Well, uh, Aragiri has been doing this flip flop. He met uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in Delhi, but at the same time, he also met Rajnath Singh, the BJP president in Delhi. So, Aragiri, op uh, his options open. The, the most ironical part of this is that Aragiri's fallout with the DMK first family, especially his father and brother Stalin, happened because of his utterances against an alliance with Vijay Khan's DMDK. Now, ironically, Vijay Khan's DMDK is very much part of the B same BJP alliance. Uh, which Aragiri may now actually support. So politics obviously a very funny business and Aragiri may actually do a complete 360 degree turn and may actually support the BJP alliance which has um, uh, Vijay Kant as one of its key members. Uh, and as you mentioned Sudhir, uh, the Congress also struggling in Tamil Nadu at the moment. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's lost, uh, not, it's lo p practically lost the support of, of the DMK after those charges against uh, A. Raja. Uh, w what happens for the UPA with this alliance now stitched up? Well, the UPA is um, uh, looking at a dark future as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. Of course, someone like Karthi Chidambaram and P. Chidambaram in Shivaganga have been putting up a brave face. It will be most likely Karthi Chidambaram who may replace his father as a candidate from Shivaganga constituency. But the fact that many of its 
senior leaders have refused to contest elections is an indication of the fact that they have exceeded defeat straight away. They do realize that their chances of winning in this Lok Sabha election from Tamil Nadu are pretty remote. So in that sense, the marginalization of Congress as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned is only going to get more and more acute. And that is definitely not good news for the Congress party, which in any case since the 60s has been... Uh, surviving in Tamil Nadu only because of an alliance with either of the two Dravidian parties. And now that it has been forced to go alone, it's certainly not good news for the Congress in the state. And, and of course, uh, we, we have Jalalata, who is uh, the, probably the strongest force going into these elections in the South. Uh, she, she might have plenty of uh, parties courting her uh, once the elections are done and dusted. Well, the, uh, well, Jailalita made her prime ministerial ambitions very clear. Her party said it, made it very clear that they would want to see a Tamilian, which obviously meant Jailalita as the next prime minister of India. Since December, when this announcement of, has, was made, a lot has changed on paper because the CPI and the CPM, which were the first two allies to uh, go along with Jailalita, have backed out that alliance has broken. And now Jailalita also, ironically, like the Congress, finds herself without any friends political friends going into this election. What kind of an impact will this lack of an alliance have on Jairalta's poll prospects is going to be very interesting to watch because in the past, Tamil Nadu has, whichever party has been able to stitch together a successful alliance, has been able to um, uh, 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 taste electoral success in Tamil Nadu. So Jairalta taking a huge risk by going it alone, but yes, on paper, she does seem to be the front runner at the moment, but she would definitely want to win nothing less than 25 to 30 seats to be some kind of uh, a player as far as Delhi is concerned. If not, um, if she doesn't get those kind of numbers with which she can actually take a claim to the Prime Minister's post, she will definitely want to be with the winning combination so that she can have ministers of her choice and do exactly what Karnanadi has been successful in doing right through the 90s and even through the um, uh, first decade of the century. That is, have a stake in the power matrix as far as Delhi is concerned. All right, and, and finally, coming to uh, the DMK itself, Karunanidhi, as you mentioned over there, uh, uh, with a bit of trouble with his, within his party, uh, how does, uh, does he have really any hope of, of, of making any sort of impact? Uh, well, the, the, uh, as far as DMDK, DMK is concerned, of, of course, it's going to be a very, very important election because it's for the first time that Sun Stalin is totally in charge of the election. Though Karnanidhi still remains the figurehead president, the very fact that Aragiri has been expelled, uh, the fact that people have been, the Kadar has been told not to have any political contact with Aragiri means that it's going to be completely Stalin's election. And it is for him to actually deliver the goods. And if he's not able to do that, there will be some kind of a question mark which will be raised about his ability to win big elections for the DMK. So uh, as far as this election is concerned, it is pretty much would be a Stalin versus Jalalta election, though for now Jalalta would have the edge uh, for now, but this is also some kind of a precursor to the 2016 assembly elections when the two leaders will really face off directly for the first time. I, I, finally, coming back to today's press conference, uh, Sudhir, uh, with uh, Rajnath Singh himself over there, this is certainly an, an effort to make a bold statement by the BJP that uh, it, we, we may not have ironed out every single little detail of this uh, alliance here, but uh, it, is, it is certainly on the cards and it's certainly something that will, uh, will be a force going into the elections. Absolutely. Two messages, two important messages coming out of this press conference. One, that after Ram Vilas Paswan, I remember a senior BJP leader told me that this is only the beginning. There will be many more leaders with a, with a support base more widespread than Ram Vilas Paswan who would join the NDA. And perhaps the presence of MDMK, DMDK and PMK is an effort in that direction. Of course, there are differences because many of these parties, especially the PMK, is also a caste-based party. So in that sense, this election will also see a lot of reinforcement of that kind. But the BJP essentially wanting to make the point that one, it is not a political untouchable and even in a state like Tamil Nadu where the BJP does not have considerable uh, political base, it is actually able to attract allies right. because they see it as a player who could come to power at the center. So there are many thanks for getting us those perspectives on what's happening in Tamil Nadu as far as politics is concerned.